I'm Marty Stauffer. Some of our wild animals are sleek and beautiful, and some are, well, sort of ugly. At first glance, the moose is awkward, ungainly, almost prehistoric looking. Although lacking in form, in function, it's perfectly adapted to its environment. To the Athabascan Indians of Alaska, the moose is a life giver. They call it Denigi. For thousands of years, they've celebrated it in their songs and stories. But recent generations of these native people have been torn between the modern world of the white man and the one they inherited from their ancestors. Let's learn more about the Athabascan people and their changing relationship to nature. Along the way, we'll also learn why few animals are magnificent, as a moose. Mirror images of the Alaska Range and Mount McKinley reflect brilliantly from thousands of lakes and ponds in central Alaska. The 20,000 foot peak towers above interior Alaska overlooking the home of thousands of wild animals and the Athabascan people. The Athabascan Indians call this mountain Denali, which some say translates as the Great One. Moose inhabit forests, and willow-laden marshes throughout much of our northern latitudes from Alaska down through the Rocky Mountains. They are among the few species of wildlife that have increased in recent years. Today, there are almost a million moose in North America, more than twice as many as were present just 30 years ago. Humans are not the only species which depend on moose for food. Grizzly bears and wolves also prey on them. In fact, humans and wild predators are increasingly competing with one another for moose. The Athabascans once hunted moose with bow and arrow and snares, so their very livelihood depended on an intimate knowledge of the animals they hunted. They inherited much of this knowledge from their ancestors in the form of songs and stories. Songs of grizzly bears, moose, and beaver continue to be passed down, but recently the songs are beginning to fade and their meaning is being lost. Minto is a small Athabascan village in interior Alaska. Its several hundred residents still live a primarily subsistence lifestyle. The land provides them with an abundance of salmon, waterfowl, moose, and caribou. Life is changing rapidly for all the people of Minto, but this is especially true 
for 91-year-old Peter John. His generation traded bow and arrow, canoe, and dog team for rifle, motorboat, and snowmobile. All were good trades from a survival standpoint, but none have come without a cost. Let's listen to the words of Peter John. But what I seen is altogether gone today, but the memory is still there. And you can't forget what happened many years ago. By looking across the country here, I think about my great great grandfather. People didn't have no tea, no sugar, no flour, no vegetables. Let's make it. God made this world and everything that's in it. And when he done that, he put the animals in it, in this world. And these animals have to eat the leaves, the willows, whatever there is. And God put medicine in there. That's what the animals live on, the medicine. So when we eat that, it helps our body to be strong and healthy. When I shot my first moose, I was about 12 years old. There's a lot of things that's going along with it. My first moose I shot is I have to give it to the old people in order for me to hang on to what I've done. When they move out, they catch moose, they look for the best make part that. There's seven, eight, nine families together. Moose meat is special. How they take care of it, how they smoke it, everything is connected with that. In the early part of uh, the Athabascan culture stand for a lot of things that's, that we don't have right now. We've lost many all of it. A long time before our time, people used to know what to take and what not to take. You have to understand that the animals you take is very important to your grandchildren. The Athabascan way is not like the white man way. The first moose he catch and the first moose that he, I want him to catch is good moose. One shot, that's all it's going to take to catch that moose. Because you make two, three shots, then that's the way the bullet's going to travel all his life. I'm an Indian. That's the kind of a life I choose me. I don't know what kind of a life you choose. You're white, and you got a way better education than I got. But the education I got, you'll never get it. No way because I'm the last one that knows about it. I'm singing two songs here, and the man that made these song is an expert on bear. <laughs> When 
when bear the hibernate all winter. In the springtime, when calf, would they go and hunt for calf and kill them. This calf died several days after birth. It's only a matter of time before its scent reaches the keen nose of a grizzly or a wolf. But the cow remains faithfully by its side. For days, she tries in vain to rouse her dead calf. There is so much bear today that um, they most they go to the water and they follow that water. They walk in the water for miles. Even that, the bear will find them just so that they can have a young one. They try to get away from the bear all they can by walking in the water. That don't, that don't stop the bear. No. But when a grizzly tackled the moose, he killed him. It's like killing a rabbit. Wolfish, I don't like it. As I see him where he killed moose, he got no mercy for nothing. Just kill him, cow and calf, just like killing rabbits. I've seen him done that a lot of times. And he hunts it like a human being. Because I've seen a lot of places where he killed moose. In some areas of Alaska, grizzlies and wolves kill 80% of the moose calves before they're three months old. Ecologists once thought that predators caught mainly old and weak animals, having little impact on the populations of their prey. Recent studies have shown that predators are indeed having an impact on moose populations. Fortunately, some calves survive, and by midsummer, they're large enough to outrun most predators. Moose spend much of the summer feeding in ponds on aquatic vegetation. It's rich in sodium, and this aids in growing a new coat. Beavers play an important role in improving moose habitat by building dams and creating ponds. Willow and alder grow in the riparian areas surrounding the ponds providing both beaver and moose with an important source of food. By building dams, these industrious rodents provide a home for many species of wildlife. When beavers abandon the pond, it becomes a lush meadow, which benefits yet other animals. This grizzly has killed a moose and return to feed on it. Bears rarely kill adult moose unless they catch them mired in mud or snow, but when they do, they have enough food for a week or more. 
provided a larger bear does not lay claim to the carcass. Many Alaskans don't like sharing moose and feel predators should be controlled, thereby leaving more moose for humans. Yet predators are an important part of the natural environment, essential to healthy ecosystems. Are there enough moose for both human and non-human predators? And if not, how do we strike a balance between the two? These are hard questions, and there are no easy answers. Right now you see more moose because uh, that's what the people live on many years ago for food and clothing. And they don't try to kill all the game off the country, but the thing is this, that they have to meet and close so they kill whatever there is. In them days, there was no game warden. And the federal government got nothing to do with what, what we killed. But as an Indian, everything we catch is very important to the family. So we have to take care of it. Many, many years ago, where the animals talked through the person. And that's the one they seen the Athabasca culture. This world is not the way God made it. It's altogether different. So therefore, we're giving the animals the hard time, which they didn't earn. But us contaminate the water, the air, even the grass, leaves, everything. What Animals live on is terminated. The white people, well, I don't blame them. It's okay. I'm not against them. But we should understand that God made this world and everything that's in it so that you and I can live. But then we destroy ourselves by destroying what God made. As the long days of summer shorten, the antlers of bull moose reach massive proportions. Some are more than six feet from tip to tip. Moose are the largest member of the deer family, and the subspecies that lives in Alaska is the largest of all. Some bulls weigh almost a ton. It's their great size that makes them so valuable to the Athabascans. One moose can feed an entire village for days. The bloody velvet, which has nourished the growing antler, begins to peel away in great sheets. Bulls will spend the next several weeks searching for cows, sparring with other bulls, and preparing for the rut. The rut, or mating season, is a demanding time for bulls. Many will be gored in fights, and some will die. Occasionally, the combatants lock antlers, resulting in a long, slow death, unless predators find the struggling victims and put an end to their misery. Once I was out, this is a long time ago, no game war. I shot three moves. There was two boys with, with me. They tell me, you were shooting with that cow. I tell them, everything go. So we went there. We put shirt and put it away. I tell them, boys, you go and put it away. I tell them, boys, you go. I started playing. I started praying. But 
I ask for help so that the animals don't touch it. Because there's a lot of people in, in the village that need it. That's why I shot three of them. I went there and I prayed. I asked God for helping me get what I want. So it's good to pray if you know what you pray to. As the rut commences, cows gather into harems, and bulls begin to dig pits in which they urinate. The urine contains pheromones that probably stimulate the cows to come into estrus. It also signals the bull's fitness to potential mates and opponents. Both sexes have distinctive calls, which aid in locating one another in the thick vegetation. The cow's call is termed a protest moan. It's thought that by vocalizing, the cows attract more bulls. More bulls means more competition, and more competition means a greater chance of finding the healthiest mate. These bulls have claimed the same harem, and neither is willing to relinquish it. Turning the head and racking the antlers shows their size to maximum advantage. But if the opponent is not impressed, a fight will follow. That's a moose on, bull moose, seen through a human being. Now, during the meeting season, the bull moose never eat for one month. Moose is just like a human being. Now, when he eats, the moose is going to take care of himself. It's very important the way he feeds. You don't just try to grab everything. The Athabasca means that don't hide whatever you catch from your friends. Because by hiding, you're not worth living. 
on your feet. Thomas White Manway, TV, tape recorder, everything, White Manway. It was uh, 1971 when the first uh, road come in here. It's not fit for people, the road. It's, it's all right in a way, but uh, that drinking problem is too much for the native people. My grandchildren, I got nothing to leave with them. No money, nothing. But the only thing I'm going to leave with, with them is that the films that we make. So I had to give them everything I got that I understand in life. How do you go to make it? I talk to them just like if I'm talking to you. And I don't hold nothing back. I try to give them the best I got. That ain't much. I'm not hiding anything from anybody. Alaskan natives have depended on moose for thousands of years. Yet these people are gradually losing touch with nature. We can record their stories and songs, but will future generations understand? Peter John has watched his people change from a subsistence lifestyle to one dominated by technology. And many Athabascans now find themselves trapped between these two worlds. The challenge is to adopt modern conveniences, yet retain their own culture. Fortunately, there will be plenty of moose for future generations. These enormous ungulates are not exactly a thing of beauty, yet few creatures are magnificent as a moose. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.